Winds of Fire is a unique book series because despite being in a third person, it managed to give a personality to all of its POV characters. Unlike Warrior Cats, who is characters who are literally blank pieces of paper, like Lion Blaze. I love and cheers every POV we get because it's just how different every character describes the world. However, there is one character in particular who I single out as the worst protagonist ever to grace the series. Blue is my least favorite protagonist. He's rather boring compared to the others and isn't a very strong character. He definitely did not deserve a POV in the Lost Continent arc and he makes a weaker arc weaker than it needs to be. Before we get started, I'm going to ask you to subscribe. I put a lot of time and effort into my work and subscribing would encourage me to do more. I'd also like to thank the current subscribers for their support. It means a lot to me and recently we passed 500, 600 and it really just warms my heart that a lot of people just think that my content's good enough to look out for more and it means a lot to me. For this analysis, I reread The Lost Continent and noted everything that stood out to me. The first thing that became apparent is Blue is a blank slate character. A blank slate character isn't particularly bad to have. The audience is supposed to relate to them. Usually, they are the average person of this world, or in this case, Dragon. This helps the audience navigate an unfamiliar world, or in this case, Continent, in the hands of someone who is more familiar with it. Blue does a really good job of this, as he is constantly thinking of other Dragon's perspective which is the point of his character, as I'll get to in a bit. He thinks about other dragons more than he thinks about himself. While this allows us to see how others see the world, it doesn't allow us to see how Blue himself leaves the world, which leaves him a relatively blank slate who we don't really know much about despite being from his perspective. There's a lot about Blue that simply seems blocked. Like for example, Blue mentions that he met Swordtail at an after school track thing. Blue doesn't seem like the type of dragon who would be on a track, as in a running track. So why was he there? It's too bad that we never get to know why he was there at the track. Does he, even, does he like running? No, he was relatively unathletic when escaping the hive wings. So we just have no idea who this character really is, even though we have him for 300 pages as our protagonist. One of the things we do learn is that Blue likes hive wings, which is strange because the hive wings literally treat silk wings like second class citizens. I believe they actually refer to silk wings as second class citizens in the book. They choose marriages for silk wings and their jobs. Since Blue, our blank slate character who we are supposed to see as the average character, loves hive wings and thinks they are biologically superior and has a genocidal hatred of leaf wings, we are meant to see the rest of the silk wings as having such beliefs. Maybe he does this as a way to appear subservient to hive wings so he can get a good job, but still, these are the dragons who oppress your tribe. In historical context, people on the lower end of K systems tend to be very unhappy, so silk wings should not be happy like Blue. However, Silk Wings appear to be very happy and in fact indoctrinated by the Hive Wings with false histories and brainwashed, meaning Blue in this case is in fact a good blank slate. However, then again, Tui is sucky world building. So let's get into my little side tangent for today. Um, Silk Wings should not be this indoctrinated by the Hive Wings and this loving them. They should still know the truth about the Hive Wings attacking the Leaf Wings and not the other way around, because Silk Wing veterans of the Tree War still exist, as it's Dragons can live to 100 or 200 years. Even if it was pe forbidden to talk about it, people still ignore rules. And also, they should know about flame silks. They definitely should know about that. And they should know about the hive mind, because, I mean, who doesn't notice almost a thousand dragons leaving a city all at one time? That would be a tiny bit suspicious. Older Silk Wings would also tell students about the other inconsistencies in her classes too, such as the biological essentialism of Hive Wings being natural superior is wrong. Pretty much every issue stems from the fact that the Hive system isn't old enough to have a class of fully subservient dragons who've never been up exposed to rebel ideas. Also, as I said before, people on the lower end of the case system usually aren't that pleased by that. Not only should they have the chrysalis, but should be at least a general discontent and resistance rather than them sucking up to the hive wings because they raise crops for them. Alright, mini rant over. Blue's empathy is perhaps the weakest point of his character as it makes his book center around other characters. This problem also occurs in the dangerous gif with Snowfall literally seeing the perspective of other dragons. Or some other character traits he exhibits though, that he is shy and meek. 
One might expect this to change by the book, just like Turtle's eventual acceptance of his animus magic. However, he doesn't become particularly more bold, though his love of high wings becomes a tiny bit more relaxed. He is also madly in love with Cricket, which shouldn't be a personality trait, but he has so little that I consider it one. I also find him falling in love with Cricket somewhat believable, as he does not ju judge all high wings by their reputation. But it's a tiny bit rushed as by the end of the book, it seems like they are both on the same stage and are dating. The entire book takes place in a little under a week. Cricket, even in her book, tends to treat Blue more as a science experiment than as a dragon. This is a great thematic contrast to how Leafwings treat him as a weapon, and I can only wish that this was intentional. So that's three or so personality traits that he has, and all of them seem to detract from him as a character. So how does he fare as a protagonist then? In my opinion, a good protagonist should have interesting motivations and should drive the story forwards. Blue has motivations, that is to get his sister back from the Hivelings' grasp, but there should always be a true reason that character is doing what they're doing. Like for example, the Grinch steals Christmas as part of his quest, but in the end the quest was really to learn the true meaning of love. Blue's true meaning is to find the book of clear sight and expose the high wings, but that was not of his volition, so I don't think it particularly counts. So Blue is a base motivation, but nothing that really goes beyond the surface. He's a quite hollow character. The fact that it wasn't Blue's choice to get the book of clear sight leads into my next point about him being a bad protagonist. He doesn't do anything for himself and is more of a reactive character than a proactive one. I went over literally every single plot point in the book to see when he actually makes a choice that impacts the plot. He doesn't choose to run from the metamorphosis ceremony. Io makes him. He doesn't choose to steal the book of clear sight. He has to to avoid being captured and killed by a leafwings. And he makes no attempt by himself to escape the flame silk cavern and doesn't even think about it. Because he makes no choices for himself, we can't really see his personality, or perhaps his passive personality plays into the lack of action, in which case Blue should have not been the protagonist for Book 11. Book 11 is introducing us to an entire new continent, so it needs to make a good impression. While Blue allows us to relate to other dragons, we don't really see his own perspective, and he doesn't even drive any of the events forward, making him a bad protagonist and character. The alternative for Blue is really quite obvious. Just swap him out for his sister, Luna. Luna is the one with connections to the Chrysalis. It makes more sense for her to be a protagonist and she would be more active as she has motivations for doing things and she's the connections. I definitely think the book would be different. Blue always tries to take the peaceful way out but ultimately crumbles under pressure. Luna's personality is the pure opposite. She's always ready for action, and even though she isn't cautious by any means, she isn't stupid either. Which is more than I can say for Blue, who didn't notice that thousands of dragons were, living, were leaving his city every day and being possessed by the queen even though they literally have glowing eyes. Maybe Luna would have kidnapped Cricket instead of just leaving with her like Blue. Maybe she would have contacted the Chrysalis for help, and surely I'm betting on this, she would have willingly helped the Leafwing steal the Book of Clear Sight. Whatever she would do, it sh would have surely be more interesting than what we got. I hope this video informed your opinion. Tell me if you think he's good as a protagonist in the comments or if he's not. If you like this video, subscribe. I love analyzing media and doing it frequently as well as animations. That's all. Have a nice day. Rogan out.